Hey there, everybody. Matt here from the Playing Strings and Comic Books channel, and today we're going to review the Department of Truth Wild Fiction Special. But before we get into that, if you guys wouldn't mind like, sharing, subscribing, commenting, it really helps me out and lets me know what you guys want to see more of. So, with that being said, let's get straight into it. All right, we got the cover here for the Department of Truth Wild Fiction Special. It is an image comic, and it is by Tinian, Simmons, and Bidikar. And before we get into it, I should just say that this is actually a special reprint of issues 10 and 11 of the series, The Department of Truth. And I believe this one was kind of put out there to have people be able to pick up this one special and get some of the best stories out of this run so far. So I'll give you guys a little bit of setup since, like I said, this is issues 10 and 11 put together. In the series so far, there was an FBI agent named Cole Turner who has been recruited into the Department of Truth, which is a secret branch of the U.S. government. And what they do is they spread sometimes truthful information, sometimes disinformation in order to run counter narratives to things people believe like conspiracy theories or even things like cryptids, which is what this issue focuses on. So we start off in a diner where we see a man talking to the waitress. His name is Evan and he is a Bigfoot hunter. And it seems like he has a nice rapport with everybody in this town. I'm sure he's been here a lot looking through these woods searching for Bigfoot. And in the background, we see the main character here, Cole Turner, who, like I said, is new. And this is the first time he's ever really looking into the cryptids part of the Department of Truth. And he's meeting with a senior agent named Hawk. And Hawk is going to take Cole on his first Bigfoot hunting trip. So as they're getting ready, Hawk explains to Cole that, you know, Bigfoots are real. Other kinds of things like that are real as well, like the Mothman. But they're only as real as people believe them to be at the time. So maybe like the movie Harry and the Hendersons comes out in theaters. So a bunch of kids start believing in Bigfoot, and now all of a sudden there are more sightings of Bigfoot around because more people believe in it. And that is why the Department of Truth is so essential is because they are basically fighting a war of beliefs because those beliefs can manifest into reality in our world if enough people hold those beliefs. And one of my favorite things about this issue is there are a bunch of journal entries from that Bigfoot hunter Evan from the beginning, and he talks about his whole history. And basically, this is a letter to his son explaining that this is going to be his last hunt. He is sick of being ridiculed because he had an experience with his own father as a young child that made him believe. So he's been looking for proof this entire time, including as he met his wife and they had kids. And eventually that causes their marriage to strain and him to become separated from his kids and wife. So as he's driving to his spot to go look for Bigfoot, he calls his son Henry, who he's close enough to talk to at least. And he tells his son, you know, he's going to go Bigfoot hunting and this time he knows he's going to bring back some proof that he can show him and of course Henry just kind of patronizes him and says like yeah sure dad okay and you can tell it's a very awkward conversation but in the end he is able to tell his son that he loves him and his son does say I love you back of course this is very emotional because we find out that this is going to be his last Bigfoot hunt Either he's going to find something or he's never coming back from the woods. So as Evan gets ready in his tree stand, we get Agent Cole Turner, Hawk, and a woman who is their guide who also works for the department, and her name is Darla. And of course, as they're walking through the woods, they're talking pretty loud and they're talking about things within the department. And like I said, Cole is new and this is the first time he's heard about cryptids really and them being real. So Darla's breaking it down for him along with Hawk. So they break it down easy at first with the concept of a jackalope. No one thought they were real. Then some guy glued some antlers to a rabbit's head. And next thing you know, we got a bunch of people believing in these things and then they actually manifest into reality. But of course, those things don't really kill you. So they're not as big of a deal. Then Darla breaks down the classifications of these different kinds of manifestations that can happen from belief, at least as far as monsters or cryptids are concerned. We get ghosts and poltergeists, things like that, which are level one. We get aliens and extraterrestrial phenomenon, which are level two. And level three are the worst ones. And those are like chupacabras or Bigfoots because they can do damage and actually kill people. So naturally, as they're walking through the woods, Cole knows that there are such things as Bigfoot hunters. And he asks Darla if they ever run into hunters while they're doing their own Bigfoot hunting. And she says, yeah, of course, and we kill them. And that just happens to be right underneath where Evan was waiting in his tree stand. And he overhears this and he's a hunter out there. So of course he's worried. And that's where I'm going to stop it. I don't want to spoil anything else. 
All right, so like I said, I picked this issue up because I wanted a taste of the Department of Truth. I'd always been intrigued by the covers and just the concept from what I heard other people talk about. And this special seemed like a good place to start because usually if they're going to reprint some issues, they're going to be the best of the best. And when I first saw it, I was kind of hesitant because I'm not a very big fan of cryptids, specifically Bigfoot. But boy, I'm glad I did because Tinian is a master of storytelling in these two issues. Because it doesn't just focus on the cryptid itself or even the Department of Truth hunting it. This whole backstory of Evan and his family and everything that's happened in his past to lead him to here is super interesting. And I gotta say, I'm a sucker for father-son stories. So this was definitely a hard-hitting, heart-wrenching story. A thing that really struck me about this book is the art is fantastic. It captures the entire vibe of this creepiness and this atmosphere of not really knowing what's going on. It really looks like certain stages of Bill Sinkovich's art, which I love, like the stuff he did for Elektra back in the 80s and 90s. But in this context, it really adds to this whole mystery feel and this clandestine branch of the government and even the cryptids. It really fits the whole atmosphere of the story well. So overall, this was one of the best comics I picked up all year. And in fact, a couple of weeks ago, you might've seen me pick up the complete hardcover edition of the Department of Truth because I loved this issue so much, I could tell I was gonna like the rest of the series. And a little spoiler on that, yes, it is an amazing series and you should definitely check it out. So you might've seen this coming, but I'm definitely giving this a five out of five stars. And one thing that's nice about jumping into the special is you don't really have to know any context about the story previously other than there's an Agent Cole and he works for the Department of Truth and he's meeting a guy named Hawk to hunt Bigfoot. It's pretty simple and straightforward. So just like me, I hadn't read any of the previous stuff and I don't think anybody else has to either. So if you saw anything you like, definitely go pick that up at your local comic book store and we will see you all in the next one.